Hakilo. I finished like every young school leaver. I wanted to go abroad. I knew my mother could not get me fares to go to Basse, but I still wanted to go abroad. That's the beauty of youth. <laughs> For you, everything is possible. And then by 95, I still didn't have a job. I still could not go to the West. Meanwhile, my friends were applying to Sierra Leone. I had so many bad stories about universities in Africa. But then I was playing football one day in Lamin, the fringes of the Abu Konejo Reserve where we used to play with uh, Sanasar and others. And a friend came and said, okay, the Gambia is going to have a university. I was like, what? Are you joking? Gambia University? I said, well, uh, my friend, in fact, you are late because those of them who had applied for FBC in Sierra Leone, they were automatically admitted to the university extension program. I said, okay, all right, I'll think about it. I said, boy, you don't have time. The lesson here is to have good friends. Choose the people you hang out with. If it were not for that friend, by the grace of Allah, I would not even have known that this thing was going on. I have friends also who didn't go to school and who are not serious with their education. I still maintain them, but uh, these were the guys I was spending more time with because I knew I was feeding on them and they were feeding on me. So I enroll 95, things start getting rocky problems, problem with textbook. Passport, them school was a problem. My mother was busy finding me a job because a poor woman selling tomato lohati and jahatu at the market. She wanted me to help her get a job. First year, no scholarship. Every other month, they'll come and ask me outside the class, but I didn't stop. I found my ways. I made sure my those were my best grades. I'll never have grades that good. Straight A's, right? Throughout the first year. I didn't have a scholarship, but they cannot send a straight A student out of the university. Of course, I didn't sit down and say, I'm straight A, you cannot send me. I went to Teresh Ndong, my former principal who was at education. I said, okay, somebody just go, I'll talk to Boris Devani. And I go. By the end of first year, I get a scholarship that pays me an allowance of $333.33. 1999 February, end of program. February 16, first ever convocation in the history of this country. And yours truly was challenged to be the valedictorian and he would not let that opportunity go. He gave an, a remarkable validatory speech. End of story. Central Bank, I got work. I left youth and sports, but I didn't leave the youth field. Don't accuse me of running away. And then a friend of mine said, again a friend. Mark it. Again a friend. I said, boy, this is a great story. Somebody should write about it amongst us. Otherwise, somebody else is going to write about this. But us was some 62 initiative 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 if you are going to be a leader if you are going to play a leadership role you have to have personal initiative any of them of could have done that but i said okay i'll do it i've never read a memoir as far as i knew up to that time there was no one in this country who ever wrote a biographical memoir but i came across a magazine that was talking of how to write memoirs and it's like okay i have a little idea i'll do it there I go, Jangi Jolof comes, the script is ready. Here's the other lesson. If you are doing something great, protect it. Don't show it to everyone. Because some, some people, maybe out of ignorance, they can see a good piece of work and they think it's not good. Ah, Lee Bahut. Some people, they'll know this is good because they are smart as you, but they don't want you to shine above them. And they'll start to criticize, and we are naturally, don't think you are too strong for criticism. Naturally, we are all susceptible, especially if it is coming from people who are close to you. So that was, was protected. Even my wife didn't see it. When I had the manuscript, I read it. I did this sujud. I prostrated and thanked God because deep inside I knew I had produced an excellent piece of work, even without any feedback. But then you need some, some vouch, some stamp outside to say okay really this is good i sent it to a professor in canada michael larson said, can you look at this this is a draft i did i'm thinking of publishing it i expected them to come with corrections change here they said no mr sabal it is so great give us permission we want to publish excerpts of this in a book that we are working on so if we don't write about this somebody else is going to write it Two Canadian professors were compiling a book. They wanted my material. I gave them the permission. It's actually published in a book called Partners for Progress, published in Canada. 
So I did my memoir at the office, Central Bank then. I tell my boss I've written a memoir. I said, you are too young for that. But then I was taking motivation, inspiration from quotes. I had this quote from Maya Angelou who said that uh, the most unbearable burden is to have an untold story inside you. So I told my boss, you know what, I think I have a story and the best person to tell that story is me. Now he saw a sense of determination in me. He said, okay, in the comma editor logo. I said, no, or it's already with the publisher. And it was. Book launched. I was launched by Her Excellency the Vice President. I actually just shared that photo on Facebook on behalf of the President. Thousand copies written. How many copies were bought? Maybe 100 or 200 because people like said they didn't even know the title of the book. How much more buy it? Exactly. But then this is the story of persistence in my life. A young graduate, I was very, I think I still owe that guy some money, the guy who printed it. Please don't say it to him because he'll come after me. <laughs> Seriously, I had more than 700 copies. Could not sell, well, I was not also very wise because I thought a great book first time in the Gambia. It was on national TV. Gambians are going to come and buy. Gambians will not buy. Why? Because Gambians are bahun, right? They don't want to see a young man succeed. That's part of the story. But what did I do also? Did I work hard enough to sell the books? No. So I go to America, do my master's, Atlanta, Georgia. Crazy there. I published a book in America about success. I was a little buddy bunker boy from Lamin teaching Americans about success. <laughs> now, I just realized how crazy that was. Now, just after the book launch, I had a couple of interviews on radio stations. That It was during an interview. I said, okay, I really went to America and I was writing to Americans about success. But then that is the other lesson about outstanding success. You have to have passion. You have to be really, you have to have a strong desire. Like state of Mike sitting here, you know, looking into some dark colored body bunker boy talking nonsense, you know. You think it's crazy, maybe he's enjoying it. So whatever you do, you have to have a passion for it, otherwise it should not go. Because I heard Steve Jobs, I've read tons of literature on this. But recently on YouTube, I saw Steve Jobs talk about passion. He said, you can only achieve outstanding success if you have passion. I said, why? He said, because for certain things, you really have to be insane to be able to stay in something that long. You read a thousand copies, your Gambians didn't buy, you went to America, you were writing a book about Americans for success. Well, and something came out of it. I sent a press release to BBC. Who does that? Little buddy bunker boy, you think BBC will listen to you? They called me in Atlanta and sent a reporter to interview me. I still have that audio file. Okay, I still didn't make money. Came back 2011, launched Instant Success. Up to that time, my best book launch. I had Latir Ka come do a review, Ajat Tambayang. Crazy Sanasar MC, Rock the Nation. I think I made quite a bit of money, maybe 200, 300,000 from that. Still, Jangi Jorof, I still had unstole copies, mind you. But I didn't say Gambi and Sibahuin, do my, do my Defati fee book launch. I kept on. I did The Way to Happiness. I did Love Notes, you know. But then I got wiser. So I, I was this young boy who saw me on the Fatu show. I was talking about instant success. He came to me and I said, I, I want a job. He said he wanted money for some medical certificate to go abroad. I said, okay, I have money, but this is not sustainable. You want to get a job? He said, yes. I said, what kind of job? He says, any job. I said, I have books. I want somebody to sell them for me. Can you? He said, yes. He started that day and sold a thousand dollars worth of books in one hour. Yes. After this book launch, I paid him $23,000 as commission. I gave him a percentage of what he sells. Just somebody who took initiative. Just saw somebody on TV. And this is one quality lacking in Gambians. Let's admit it. We are all proud at some level. Ah, boy, Sabali. No, just try. If you knock, a door will open. If you wander, a path will emerge, as Alice says, in Wonderland. So we do love notes, way to happiness. I had this project with me for seven years. Father Gambia living the national anthem. Seven years, one of the smallest books I ever wrote. But the idea was a little bit too complex, and I wanted it to be top notch. I wanted every sentence to sound like a poem. And I kept this until I had a draft around 05, sent it to a friend of mine. He said, He has never seen anybody in the whole world, and he's an expert in literature. He said, He has never seen anybody write a book about a national anthem. I said, Good. I came back, worked on it, worked on it. When I was ready, and sent him a manuscript. Now, the published work, I sent it to him. He said, 
Uh, number one, you put Yaya Jame's picture on the book. That is bad. You are quoting Yaya Jame about democracy. Yaya Jame is not a Democrat. A whole page, an essay of insults. A close friend of mine. So, did I tear that book and refuse to launch it? No. He doesn't know my mission. I have a mission. I have a mission to inspire young Gambians, instruct them on how to make the best use of the opportunities that exist in this country. Did you hear me? Now, that's a lecture of its own. I can't digress enough. We'll talk about that in another forum. But here goes. What did I respond to that guy? You want to guess? You don't want to guess. Somebody should guess. What was my response? Ignore. Ignore? Yes. I didn't. I did just about that. I did it. You know, Mamoru Sawali is not the guy you can walk over and he'll let you go. If you slap me, I'll slap you. I, I, I had a one in Bible knowledge, but I forgot about that verse that called turn the other cheek. No, no, no. If you, I, you, you do me, I do you. Man no, no, is it man no go vex? Something like No, that's me, honestly. Sometimes I try to be the bigger guy, but generally, I do react a lot. But in this instance, I say, you know what? If I have to write another essay to respond to him, I'll use my energy, I'll get angry. Maybe I can use that time to write an essay shared in the newspapers and inspire young people. So I write this one sentence, I say, thanks, your comments are noted. In time, the perspectives would be revealed, full stop. The guy writes another essay apologizing, oh, I'm very sorry, I didn't mean to hurt you, I didn't complain. I say, I'm very sorry, you know, in fact, you have never criticized me for my political positions, I don't even know why I'm criticizing you for your political positions, and you are the one talking that, man, wahumadara. But then I made a point without speaking. I am doing what I am doing. If you understand it, fine. If you don't understand it, I don't owe you an explanation. A book is an art of work. My wife reviewed my book, The Smiling Course, and he thought it's an exercise in feminism. That's the biggest insult I ever got. Yes, you heard that, girls. I'm not a feminist, but that's what she saw. So everybody looks at a piece of literature, comes with a different interpretation. When Wagan read for the Gambia, the part he related was this, where I was talking about Mohammed Jah and Papa Yusuf and Jai growing and building to become millionaires. I said, you know what, I was playing football with these guys in Pipeline. If they can do it, I can do it. But the other friend was a political guy. Maybe he hated the IJM as well. I could not care less. I do what I do. If you can take inspiration, that's my message. If not, your interpretation, that is your business. And us, young emerging leaders, you have to grow up to learn to be able to deal with criticism. If you spend your life trying to please everybody, you'll end up pleasing nobody. And you'll end up being a failure in your life. They can insult stone Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Insult Jesus. Kill Yahya. Who are you? So you have to be willing to accept criticism. So long as you know your mission, you have a goal, you are getting there, don't let anybody distract you. And sometimes the way they distract you is to bring in criticism here and there. You respond and you forget your mission. Now you are a fighter. So you don't do that. So I focus on my writing. Some people will criticize. Yes, I don't listen to them. I just write. Some people think, even think I'm writing too much. Somebody said jokingly the other day, I was jogging at night. Say, we are going to write a protest. You know, I said there was some community in America where people went and protested to their neighbor because he's an overachiever. He said, I'm, uh, said I'm into everything, so they are going to protest. He said, you'll have all of those. This guy was joking, but there are people who really get angry if they see you succeeding. But you don't respond to them. You don't attack them. You just keep doing what you are doing. They say that actions speak louder than words. But back to the story of writing. Ten years ago, I sat down in a little room. I was renting in Banjulinding, that's behind Lamin. I read a motivational book by an American author called The Miracle of Motivation. The guy was talking about hidden talents. Now I said, what is hidden talent? He said, hidden talents are hidden because you have it in them, but you have not explored their potential. He said, everybody has them. I don't care whether you are a movie maker or you are a feminist or you are working in the media. There is always something else that Allah has endowed you with that you can try. So look inside yourself. So I sat there, I said, Okay, my hidden talent, writing. I still have that notebook. I showed it to my wife last week. Writing. Ten years ago, I sat down and said, my hidden talent is writing. Then there was no Mumuru Sawali in the writing field. I had not even written one or two 
proper essays for publication. But I believe that I was one of the best writers in this country, even before I lifted a pen. But I didn't go around shouting about that. I did something about it. I wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote until I met a girl who called me Gambia Shakespeare. Now, that's, that's cool. But you have to sweat it out. It took me 10 years to be called Shakespeare. Maybe it will take me another 10 years to be Shakespeare. Taking the inspirational angle and not allowing my head to go fat because you, a pretty girl called me Shakespeare and I stopped writing. I said, people go buy my books. I'm going to be a Shakespeare. No. I go out there and write and write and write. Okay, she said, I'm Shakespeare. Okay, maybe I'm half Shakespeare. I published eight books. Let me double it to 16. You keep gilding and growing. I told my wife, there are a lot of people around who think, okay, Sabali Mungi Binda, everything. You can't even I'm time for Binda. There are a thousand things you can write about. I said, my wife, they don't understand me. How many Gambians can you find who will fight? take Albert Einstein as a role model? He's my role model. I don't care what he has achieved. He's got a brain. I have a brain. I can grow and build like him. I have Benjamin Franklin as my role model. My premier role. I can relate with him more than any other person. So they said, okay, Sabali Nelson Mandela. I'm not saying Mandela is bad. I love and respect him. I, I cannot connect with him. I connect with Benjamin Franklin. And I'm not just a Gambian, I'm a citizen of the world. I sit down here and say, okay, Gambia. Ah, Sabali Mofin Jacob published Nyari book launch them together. And I get those kind of things also. Somebody wrote to me when I was in America, you are the first Gambian to have a master's and publish two books. I said, what? Who told you I'm trying to be the first Gambian in anything? Who said I cannot be the greatest writer in Africa? Or respect you to Wally Soinka. I don't think he has better writing skills than me. He's written more than me. He's gotten better recognition. But I don't think he has writing better. Okay, listen to this. Let me just close here. You are all young. You are a movie maker. What, what do you do? Youth council. You are a youth worker. What do you do? Manning Empire. You are a student. What else? And a technician. Okay, what do you do? You are a youth worker. So you sit down here and there is recently appointed United Nations Youth uh, Rep, Youth Envoy. He's great. He's greater than you, right? But how old is he? Maybe double your age or something. Who says that by the time you reach your a his age, you cannot be greater than him? I'm not saying you're greater than him now, but you can be greater than him by your time. Assess him. When he was your age, did he was he able to run a youth association like you are doing now? Maybe no. You know, I have a lot of mentees in this country. Most of these youth workers, these boys with big heads who break away from your youth organization so that they also call president. This guy used to come, he used to walk, come to my office, they stopped me, wanted mentoring. Went for studies somewhere, for some reason he attended one UN conference. The guy, every week he posts on Facebook, he's another, Euro, he's another European capital. Because he attended this UN convention on youth, and there was some project proposal competition. You better keep these notes. <laughs> His proposal was the best for young people around the world. You didn't even know him. He's, he was not even that vibrant in the youth, in the youth body here. But he went there and he was the best. He told me, Mr. Sabali. And this time he was in a suit, you know. He was all the way from Paris and New York. And, you know, Mrs. You know, Mrs. Sabali, you know, really, it was a time that I appreciated, you know, all this youth work I was doing here. Appreciate it now. Don't wait for that moment. Because you don't know how it is going to come in handy for you. He wants to appoint me as some code of some network of entrepreneurs he is uh, working on. I'm not so interested in that because I'm a writer. But you are doing something. You know, I just, I missed my way, went to the MDI, I thought that's where the forum was going to be. And I saw this guy, I said, ah, keep my left my appoint as campaign manager. Student government election. I said, why? I said, why? I'm going to knock them up. So, ah, guys and campaign manager, they just go and say, okay, I'm glad to introduce Mr. St. Matthias, the contestant. I said, well, if that's bad, why, why don't you make it better? She's not even getting it. Us, you... You know, you're joking with these things here. Go to America, those things can transform your life. Get straight A's here. Try get into Harvard and see. Everybody has a straight A to get into Harvard. What do they do? Extracurricular activities. That's why my wife enrolled my students in the we can read programs, some of doing basketball, some of these drama competitions. These are the things that get you the edge outside this world. But we all downplay them here. 
they are very important. So what you are doing is important. You need inspiration. I got inspiration. I knew I had a hidden talent. But I didn't shout out there and say, hey, I'm Gambia Shakespeare. No, I wrote for 10 years and got the compliment. And I am still writing. Some people think, ah, Savali book launching Amir Fabari. Somebody wrote from France to my publisher. And my publisher had the guts to say, well, Savs, I'm not going to be in France. Mune, Savali's book launching every year is getting monotonous. Now your book, next book launching is going to be in 2014. I said, publisher, don't ever tell me what I'm going to do. Nobody tells me what I'm going to do. I said, if I listened to people, I would not have published Jange Jolof. Because my boss said I was too young. I didn't have any, any money myself, and but I did it. I said, I didn't listen to people, then I am not going to listen to anybody now. If I want, I will launch a book next month. If I want, I will launch another next month. I don't know whether I will do that. But I am going to do something greater than I did the last time. Keep pushing. But whatever you do, you will need that inspiration Pay attention to what you do in life. Maybe one day, one of you is going to do a movie that's going to be a set of young people who came for inspiration and one guy got distracted by a gum water bottle because the girl was sitting next door to him. Here is a movie. Just use your imagination, take it to the next step. So whatever you're doing now is going to build you into the future. I am doing what I am doing, saying what I am saying. I can say these things because I went through several things in my life. I have all of it here as raw material. So pay attention to what you do. Take it seriously. Stay inspired. Stay away from negative people and situations. Surround yourself with people who will encourage and inspire you. And whatever you do do it with persistence and determination the rest will be taken care of by a power that is bigger and better than you hakilo 